Okay, so um, in uh, one of my previous videos, uh, this gentleman here, Richie Jacobs, asked, so what is God saying in that verse in Hebrews? And that's a great question. Uh, I assume you're asking about Hebrews 6, okay? Maybe you're asking about Hebrews 10 as well, but let's take a look at uh, Hebrews 6. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and read it and see if this helps. Uh, you know, I always, if I have any questions, I just read either the whole chapter or the whole book. Okay, and uh, let God guide me. So, if you look at Hebrews, there's 13 chapters. And if you approximate five minutes per chapter, that would take you about 65 minutes. So about an hour, you know, if you're slow like me, it's going to take at least an hour. Uh, you know, it, it all depends, really. I mean, I read the book of John under two hours a couple of days ago and it was 21 21 uh, chapters so five minutes that's five minutes a chapter so that's oh what is that now that's yeah that's under two hours easy okay so that would be like an hour and 45 minutes so but I read slow so anyways point is it doesn't take that long to read. If you are like an expert in movies, you like to come home and watch movies. And say, let's say you come home and you watch a, a Lifetime movie. And if you're an expert on movies, you're going to be watching Lifetime movies. And that's about two hours. Well, if you read like the Gospel of John, what Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, that takes about two hours, give or take. And those books are as you know as great as those lifetime movies are those books are even better they really are so i would encourage um, everybody to read every day i mean if you read the whole bible in one day every day from the age of five to the age of 90 you would still learn something new every day this bible this is a, a well, uh, an unlimited well, right? So uh, you're not going to draw everything out of it, you know, in this lifetime for sure, right? So it's an unlimited well of knowledge and understanding, and wisdom. So I, would, I always encourage people to read, okay? And what, in my experience, the confusion comes in when I put too much... Uh, reliance on what others teach and uh, not what the Bible says. So I like to mix it up. I like to hear other people's views. It helps me uh, to understand my own views, right? So let's take a look at this. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of the of laying on the hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Now, in the other video, I showed what it clearly doesn't mean. All right, so uh, there are people that will say that you, you can lose your salvation, and this is a verse that, that shows it. And, I, and so, in the other video, I showed that that's if that were true, then you're doomed because you are going to fall short of the perfection. You're going to fall short of the glory of God. You're not perfect. You're going to sin because you're in this body. I know you're in this body. You know you're in this body. God knows in you're this body. And who will save you from this body of death? Right? So, 
what this what this is so i'm going to show you what this is talking about right uh, it, obviously it, it does not in any way talk about this idea that you can lose your salvation because if you can lose your salvation jesus christ is a liar and what he did meant nothing um and it's just people that aren't saved are going to teach that you have to do that he didn't do enough that's just the wicked world that we live in so let's continue here uh, for the earth which drink in the rain that come often upon it and bring forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed receive blessing from God but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned but beloved we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. Okay, so um, this is uh, what I what I consider a parallel verse to what we read in Matthew 13, uh, where Jesus talks about uh, he 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 gives a parable of the sower that went forth to sow, and he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, fowls came and devoured them up, some fell by the stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth, and when the sun was up, they were scourged, and because they had no root, they withered away, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them, but other fell into the ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundred, and some sixty, some thirty, who has ears to hear, let him hear us. So he, he explains that further. And yeah, I think you'll I think you'll find that parable in in three of the gospels. Okay, so the point is this is what I what I consider a uh, like a parallel uh, to that parable where um, you know when it says uh, when, when it's talking about the rain coming down upon the earth, this is uh, the living water this is everlasting life and some get a taste of it and you know just like the parable of matthew 13 all right they get a taste of it but then the world uh they're so connected to the world they don't want to forsake the world so they reject um you know the spirit they they reject the living water because of their own deeds right their own deeds are wicked so uh, I think that that explains it pretty well. I, it's not really complicated. It's very simple. It's just when you're dealing with people that are twisting the Word of God to mean something else, it does affect how you look at Scripture. Now, you're wondering, are they right? Because it doesn't really connect with everything else in the Bible. And there's no contradictions in the Bible at all. So you got to keep that in mind. And the King James Bible is the perfect Word of God. And whatever's written in it, there cannot be a contradiction. If you, if there is a, a conflict of any sort, you know, I would encourage you to reread it and to understand uh, that they there cannot be a conflict. So the conflict is in you, and um, it's on you to figure it out. All right. So this stuff is it's very simple, but when you're living in a world of confusion. Uh, things get complicated, but if you wash away all the, you know, bull butter, then just focus on the truth. Uh, it becomes clear to you. And uh, I think uh, I got a minute left, so I'm going to end it right there. But if you have further questions, please do ask. I'll I will address them. Thank you.